In Kenya and most of Africa, maize is the most grown staple crop. It is estimated that more than 300 million people depend on maize as their main food source. Millions of smallholder farmers, most of whom are women, still rely on rainfall for their crops, yet Africa is severely affected by frequent drought, leading to crop failure, hunger and poverty. Climate change only worsens the problem. We've been doing some work for the last about three years uh, addressing the challenge of uh, insects, uh, pests in maize and also um, the effect of drought on maize. Therefore, identifying ways to mitigate drought risk, stabilize yields and encouraging small-scale farmers to adopt best management practices is fundamental to realizing food security and improved livelihoods for the continent. The way we started in 2008 with three main objectives. One was to develop maize uh, that is tolerant to drought using conventional breeding technology. That is as opposed to um, transgenic technology or opposed to molecular breeding technology. The second one was the molecular breeding technology itself including using other new technologies like the doubled haploid uh, technology that very much speeds up this, the process of uh, developing uh, inbred lines which are parallel to the hybrids that we, we look for in WEMA. And the third one is developing drought tolerant uh, transgenic uh, maize using um, uh, traits that have been developed by the private sector and especially Monsanto, which is a part of the, uh, of the, of the project. The Water Efficient Maize for Africa project, WEMA, is a public-private partnership coordinated by the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, to develop drought-tolerant and insect-protected maize varieties. The purpose of these improved varieties is to produce more reliable harvests under moderate drought conditions and protect maize from insects. The project aims at developing uh, both uh, drought tolerant uh, maize material and also insect resistant maize for uh, maize, uh, particularly aiming at uh, stem borers. Uh, to be more specific, we have the, the Kylopatellas and also have the Busiola fusca as major stem borer species that affect maize production in Africa. The African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, is working with the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, CIMIT, Monsanto, and the National Agricultural Research Systems in Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. The partners are contributing their technology and expertise to the project. An example is uh, like where we are in Kenya here. Lost to insect pests, the same borders, is an equivalent of 400,000 metric tons of maize lost which translates to, you know, about 7 billion Kenyan shillings, which is a great loss. If that money, the government used it, and it is equivalent to the amount of the maize that is imported into the country, if that amount could be used for development projects that would reach the small scale farmer, this, we are talking of fathers, mothers down the village, that would make a, a huge difference in the socioeconomic development of that area. Funding is provided by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, and USAID. So we also want to thank our, our partners, especially um, CIMIT and AFTF, for helping us in terms of capacity building. They have helped us to acquire infrastructure, for example, the confined field trials uh, facilities, the greenhouses and the greenhouses, and capacity building in terms of biosafety issues. The experiments in Kenya 
are carried out at Kiboko in Makueni County. This is the sixth set of experimentation that we are doing, and we have had these experiments since 2008. WEMA uh, as a project was launched some um, six, six years ago and uh, what has uh, essentially happened is uh, uh, CARI in collaboration with the partners have been doing confined field trials like this one. What I mean by confined field trials, these are trials that are confined for purposes of research. In other words, this testing site was uh, inspected by the regulators and found to be ideal for handling uh, this kind of research that, uh, as you may know, uh, deals with uh, genetically modified uh, crops. When you are developing a variety to take to the farmer feed, it has to pass different stages. The breeders start from developing in braid lines, then make different combinations, evaluating across locations, across the years. Then after a long process, they come to select the best variety. Uh, yesterday we had a lot of work with the Katovani team. The Wema team was here counting the seeds. We counted the, the trio seed, the stressed, and the op optimum and also we counted the checks which are going to be planted tomorrow. Uh, today uh, we were to collect uh, the, the seeds with the Kevis staff and we take to, uh, to Kiboko where the seeds will be kept overnight awaiting tomorrow's planting. Uh, this exercise has taken like uh, two days because there is a day for counting the seed, which takes the almost like the whole day. Then after counting the seeds, we keep them in the GMO store where they are secure and they are locked. And Kevis inspects and supervises all these uh, activities. And also Kevis also oversees how the seed is removed from the GMO store and well, uh, whether it's well packed and they escort this seed until the recipient who is the, 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 the facility manager at the CFT site of WEMA project. The experiments are confined field trials where we evaluate genetically modified maize. There are two sets of genetically modified maize. The first type of maize is BT maize used for control of insect pests such as the stem borer. The second type has the drought tolerant gene to improve water efficiency in order for maize to produce yield even under drought. We begin by planting and the whole exercise undergoes all the regulatory processes. All the agronomic practices are followed. In the end, anything that has been used is not allowed to leave the premises. <laughs> Siku ya leo tunafanya thinning na infestation. Thinning inamaanisha ya kwamba tutatoa mahindi tutatoa tutangoa sana mahindi tukiaja singine. Kwa hiyo mahindi tukisia after germination the seedlings are thinned to obtain the right plant population. The genes that are under trial here have been uh, developed by Monsanto uh, company, both the BT gene and the drought tolerant gene. So 
we, we play a major role in, in technology uh, availability as well as our capacity building. Monsanto has got scientists who are collaborating with our local researchers at uh, Kenya Livestock and Agriculture Research Institute. Uh, together with uh, AATF and other partners in the project and uh, that's our role as far as uh, this project is concerned. After four years of research on drought tolerance, it became clear that insects were having significant impact on yield that could negatively impact the benefits possible through drought tolerance. One of the major insects affecting maize is the stem borer. Stem borer feeds on every major part of the maize plant, thus reducing the flow of water and nutrients, causing stem breakage due to physical damage and possible development of toxins caused by damage to the plant. The yield losses are worse when drought conditions and insect pressure combine in the field. This has led to the addition of insect pest protection to the WEMA project. For most smallholder farmers, the only option for controlling pest insects is to spray the plants numerous times with insecticides that are costly and are not easily available. Insect protected maize provides in-plant insect protection against damaging stem borer insect pests, which allows more widespread and consistent control of target insects on the maize plant. We are here to carry out an activity that is very important for this um, WEMA project that is infestation of Moni 810 uh, trial and why we are doing the infestation is so that we can test and see that the gene that is inserted in some of this maize is able to control some of the challenges that we are facing in terms of insects and uh, these are the stem borers. Make sure that you put 10 insects per plant. Don't expose the insects to the harsh weather. They will be desiccated by the wind or chances of escape are so many. And when the escape chances are, they'll fall into a plant and they are going to increase the quantities within that particular plant. May I see by a show of hand those that have participated in this exercise? When you make what you Ah, karibu kila mtu. So two things that you shouldn't do, don't expose them, don't bang them and coagulate. The third thing that we should all be careful and make sure is when you are infesting in the maize seedling, make sure that there's no water. You've seen some splashes out. What we do, we scoop, okay? You scoop and you can scoop between four or five or something like this, scooping, you put them directly into the wall. You release them gently, okay? So poking is not acceptable. Banging the jar is not acceptable. Exposing them to harsh weather and escape is also not acceptable. And drowning them is not acceptable. Insect protection was developed from the naturally occurring soil bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT in short, which produces a protein that is toxic to the digestive systems of a targeted group of insects. Through genetic modification, a modified form of the insect protected gene is inserted into the maize plant so that it can produce the protein on its own. This approach enables the plant to defend itself against these insects and reduces the amount of insecticides needed. These proteins have been used in organic farming for over 50 years to control insect pests. Studies have shown that the protein is safe to humans, livestock, wildlife, 
non-target organisms and beneficial insects. A more reliable harvest could give farmers additional confidence to invest in their farms and improve their farming practices. The addition of insect protection will also reduce pesticide use, which will bring benefits to both the environment and human health. As you can see, we have two experiments running concurrently, where we are testing the efficacy of the gene, and here we are looking ab uh, about how the gene is affect our environment. That is the base study we are doing here and we call it non-target organic study. Then, uh, there we are looking about the efficacy against the stem borers. But here we want to see the other insects which are not stem borers. And they also have the same behavior. If for that, as you can see, we have those traps. We call them the Mayes trap. And all insects passing around the, the feet are trapped and get to this alcohol. Insects flying just come in. When it's coming, he hit the net and he try to get out. There will be only one option for that insect is to go up, 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 and he will get this hole. Thinking that is a hole, to get out. Then when he enter, he will be, it will be trapped there. Because when we put the insect in alcohol, especially 70 percent, they are well preserved and very easy to identify. The stem borer research is also carried out at the biosafety greenhouse in Nairobi. So you pick this one up and we show. And you see we have some cages surrounding me. Those cages are for oviposition. Then we are going to test if the insect can detect the transgenic maze from the non-transgenic. Then we set some non-choice experiment and some choice experiment depending of the cage. And today is the last day we are going to harvest those eggs, count them, prepare them, we are now here to see if there will be a difference between a transgenic and non-transgenic. Mm -hmm. If you write batch one, then they write the corresponding number of eggs near them. We have BT maize, non BT maize here. So we are trying to see whether the stem borers, as you have seen, the, the, these are the larvae here, the pupae here. We have released the pupae here and then the adult comes out. The adult has a moth. So whether this moth uh, do prefer BT or non BT maize. So we are testing that one, whether these moths are really attracted to the maize which has BT gene or the one which doesn't have BT gene or no preference at all. That means they can be attracted to any one of them. We have two species of stem borers, Busola fusca and the Chylopartilis. Okay? So if you might have seen in the field at the CFT in Kvoko, we have run a trial on Busola, I mean Chylopartilis, one species of stem borers. The other species, which we cannot do under field condition because Kvoko is not conducive for that species, we want, to, we want to see or test that insect here in the greenhouse, right? So um, it is the replication of the CFT into the bio safety greenhouse. So we'd like to see um, whether the BT gene has effect on Pisola fusca as it does on, on uh, Chylopartilis in the, in the bio safety greenhouse. We come back to Kiboko confined field trials to check the outcome of the insect infestation. What we are here to do is today is to take the second damage score. And this is a damage score that we normally take after one month feeding by the insects on the maize. 
The first one is uh, during um, three weeks after planting, which is two weeks after germination. At that time, we come and infest the insects into the maize plant. After infesting, we allow them another one week, then we come and do the reinfestation. This one gives us certainty that actually the insects are already in the maize wall and there is no maize that has escaped within the barbed field from the infestation. Then we wait for one week after the second infestation, which is two weeks after the first infestation, and then we take the first damage score. And this one we use a scale of nine, where one is the cleanest and nine is the most heavily damaged. And we normally tell by the amount of feeding that has been inflicted by the insects on the maize leaves. And then after that, we wait for another two weeks. We allow the insects to establish within the maize plant and to continue causing more damage into the maize. And then we come and take the second score. And that is what we are here to do. So today we are here so that we can take second leaf damage scores. We normally have 10 plants in each of the row. So one plot has two rows. So there will be a total of 20 plants per plot but 10 in each of the row within the mapped field that were infested with insects. Now, we do two sets of scores, one by a different person, so that at the end of the day, we are able to compare the two sets of uh, scores from two different people, so that we eliminate bias, because if it's only one person taking, they may be biased in a way. So when we get a second person, then we get the average score between these two scores. And the first thing we do between these two people is to agree on how we are going to take the scores. And as I had said earlier, we use a scale of one to nine. We are one is very clean with very little damage or no damage at all. And nine is the heavily damaged to some extent that they are dead heart. They are completely destroyed by the insects. One, one, one. The second row is one, 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 one. One, one, five, five, six, seven. What about other insects? Six. Lady Bat, seven. There might one. A other air wing. A monoptera one. During the research, farmers living around the research center are also briefed. Trying to avoid, we plant at the time when we avoid the vector population build up. By the time the vector population is built up, the maize is already above the stage when it's susceptible. Okay? That's the basic maize when we talk of early planting and planting at the same time. Now, company Ambazo, Zinatengeneza Dawa and Mimea. And this company Nyingi, Zinatengeneza Dawa Fake. Come on. Ukwetu ile mvua tunapata ni katikati ya mwezi mmoja 
na miezi miwili aisidi hapo na tumeona hii begu inachukua saidi ya miezi ine, ama kama miezi ine. Hii mbegu itafumilia hiyo miezi miwili bila kupata mfua. Swali so, langu ni Tutaenda moja kwa moja sisi wote kule chini. Kuna ma, kuna sehemu moja yenye ningependa tutatangulia kuenda pale penye tunafanya experiment zetu ili pamoja nyinyi na nyinyi na mimi ni waonyeshe ni nini tunafanya na tunaelekea wapi tano fupi wa kujionea tu vile mambo yalivyo kama tutakuwa tunavuna au kama tutakuwa tunavuna lakini ujionee natumai tutaweza kufanya hivyo kabla ama christmas kabla ipate mwaka huu sasa tukisha funga maji inamaanisha kwamba hiyo ni sehemu moja ambayo nimekwambia ni 21 repeats pale tuna sehemu tuna test nyingine pia ni treat tunasema pande moja tutafungia maji kuna kuongeza na pande ile ingine tutaendelea iwe kawaida maji itaendelea kuongezwa kuwekwa tu kwa hivyo tuna compare viwango viwili vya testing hapa ndani na test material ambayo iko na gene na haina gene na na kulinganisha pande hii na pale nyingine kwingine tunalenga kujua kwamba hapa ukitoa maji hiyo material ina perform aje kilinganisha na kama ungepea maji kabisa Before the maize is released, it undergoes further tests. These new drought-tolerant and insect-protected maize varieties will help farmers harvest enough to feed their families. Farmers will also have a surplus which they can sell to increase their incomes and help strengthen local communities and whole countries. This work is the sixth set of experimentation that we are doing and uh, we've had this uh, experiment from 2008 up to now and and uh, the work is ongoing what we want to generate over here is uh, is we want to generate information that will enable us to make decision on um, whether to advance with uh, drought material uh, testing or not. The experiment as it is, we have uh, 32 test materials. There are 16 positive and 16 negative. The positives contain the gene, the drought tolerant gene, and the negative are without but they are isolines. Isolines is, a, is a, a genetic equivalent, but the difference is that one has a gene and the other one does not have the gene. And then we are also using commercial checks. Commercial checks are the locally available materials in the market, which we are now also using as controls to, or to test with the test material together to be able to know uh, how better our materials that we are testing are is above the the commercial ones. Consist uh, the data that we have generated in the previous experimentation has really given us has given us evidence that is actually workable and that is a practical solution to the drought challenge. However, we are still working on it at the moment and we should be able to make conclusions towards the end of this year on the kind of data that we we'll have generated the way forward for this is that uh, as, a, as, a, as a scientist in the 
in the system, the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute. I'm looking forward to having this experiment and uh, not only, uh, I mean, we want to have output from this in terms of materials that would be usable by the Kenyan farmer. To sell. The general public also needs to know. That is why the members of the press had their day at Kiboko. It's very, very conspicuous. You see that we are having things, plantlets that are emerging, showing a lot of damage. In uh, October and, uh, I mean, October, September, October, November. But there's also effects, what about the global situation? The seeds will be availed to seed companies. That is why these companies are also involved in the process. Hybrid is excellent. Again, if the seed yield is very poor, the seed companies will not be interested to produce that hybrid. I say to you, they are business people. When you are businessman, you are looking for profit in addition to what you are trying to help people. So those parental lines or the parental single cross, are they give reasonable yield for the seed company? If they are poor, we don't recommend for relief. That is the area where we are looking for. We have uh, a seed company's meeting together with the product development team uh, visit to carry Kiboko, where uh, the city companies will be visiting uh, our breeder seed production plots. And uh, after that, they will be able to see our demonstration field, where we also have the both the carry hybrids and the water efficient maize for Africa developed uh, products. The, demos, the breeder seed uh, production unit, which uh, the demo plot where we have, we are, the plot where we have the breeder seed production is uh, comprising of all uh, inbred lines, the parents that we are currently using for the formation of Wema derived, conventionally derived uh, hybrids. And also we are maintaining the same inbred lines uh, through selfing of the plants, the parents, to maintain the purity of the parents. We have planted 106 hybrids. As Steve said, I came from a breeding background. I love working in this way. You will see the power of science, okay? Get patient, please be patient and walk through them. You will enjoy them. The parent block, I'm sorry to tell you that because there was a strong wind, a little bit of lodging. lodging. But when you come to the, you go to the other block, no lodging, okay? So it is self-experimentary, the hybrid name is there, the project, NPT1, NPT2, everything is clear, walk through them. Thank you so much. But if you have specific questions, we are with you. Yeah. Dr. Bayene, I think uh, the, the, the CDP team knows you, but the CD companies, I think maybe you didn't meet him yesterday. But Dr. Bayene is a maize breeder with us here in Simi, specifically for WEMA, and also a little bit of uh, DTMA. So if you have questions, and then we have Dr. Machinda at the back there, if you raise your hand. And even um, yeah, yeah. Uh, our current colleague, Dr. Murenga, somewhere with us, or maybe he's preparing our no, next, yeah. next time. He doesn't raise his hand, or he's away. So if you have a question, I think, on more than what is written here, or even uh, on what is written here, please ask. This day, uh, the scientists who are attending uh, the meeting on the product development team, they will have a chance to evaluate our materials and make scores, selections, which will then help to reduce on numbers for us and then 
carry on with materials that are elite and have uh, uh, good levels of desired at attributes of interest, mainly drought tolerance and also earliness and also stem borer tolerance. What we are about to see, and the details will be coming shortly, is we have breeder seed production behind us. The details are there. And then two, you will see a demo. A demo where you have the parents of the hybrids that you will see in the various projects, not only for WEMA, but also across the programs that we are about to, I mean, in our maize program. Three, you will see hybrids by the time we leave out of here, we'll see hybrids in the different categories from early, depending on the days to flowering and the maturity times. So what we have done there, we have the parents, all of them are three-way. I think it's only one hybrid that is a single cross. We are going to see that. So we have planted the parents, the first two parents, two, so two rows each, the, the, the female then the male. And then you'll see the single cross. Then after the single cross, you are going to see the dad parent, which is also the male, and then you'll see the hybrid. So that one will give you a picture of all the, the hybrid. And this is, you'll see this for the, uh, for the, uh, for the pass. I know Agra's team is here, and the seed company, I know they deal with us, they work also with Agra. So we do that one as for all the projects. So you'll see the materials that are hybrid that are already recommended for release for uh, four parts. There are about five of them, seed companies, they know them. And then you are going to see the eight hybrids that are for WEMA, the same. So as we walk this way. Let's proceed. Follow James. Uh, If you are a good, you might get 3.5 or 4 tons. We are finished. We are, we are from the from single cross. Single cross. Members of the legislature also had their day to be familiar with what goes on. Today is a special day because we are hosting for the first time a large number of uh, members of parliament, a total of 26 of them. They are coming here to witness that actually the technology that we talk about works and they are also going to see how they can help us take our experiments from confined field trial in Kiboko into other ecologies, hoping that someday we are able to be able to release this maize to the farmers. So the 
um, this is just reduce them, you double them. Within a span of actually one year, you already have your 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 lines to develop the hive. Yeah. You once you induce your materials, not the whole cob will have will be have, not all of them will be happy. Mm -hmm. And then you discard this. Yes. So basically, this is the lab facility, and uh, if I, use, I may use the word, this is where the magic happens, the doubling process. So once we, do, we, we, we we have already terminated our haploids, uh, we have our purchasing tank, we have our wood, we have our fridges where we keep most of our chemicals. We have the agents that we're using for doubling. Uh, within uh, 8 to 12 hours, the materials are ready. So you, depending on, we are trying to, to like uh, optimize two protocols. So depending on the protocol that we're using, that's why the time may be a bit uh, variable. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, order. <laughs> there is the one, those 11 varieties I'm talking about have been bred through conventional. And Georgina will explain and Margaret will explain conventional. So now what I would wish to do with the blessings of my director here is to take you for a walk right in the maze. I hope you can be able to withstand the heat of Kiboko in the sun. And then you are seeing the crop when it's dry. Sometime I hope in future you can see it when it's green and then you'll appreciate the real differences. But even then you can be able to see the losses and some of the damages that has been inflicted on the maze. What we have here in Kiboko is called Kailopatelas. It is not the same stem borer you find in Embu, because those are two different environments. It's a different ecologies. And I would wish we just walk, don't get tired, just a few meters further. And this one, we have watered it nicely. So you will see the difference between this and that. And then you'll appreciate the importance of uh, genetic engineering. The new Wema varieties, including products developed with transgenic approaches, undergo all regulatory requirements and evaluations before farmers can grow them. The varieties developed through transgenic approaches also undergo extensive health and safety risk assessments to confirm product safety. Well, we are here. Any burning questions? Yes. <coughs> um, you have told us that... Um, you are able to grow this without any water. I appreciate that. You are able to grow this with water. Have you carried any, out any trials as far as the side effects it might eat, or it might uh, have on consumption by human beings? Any trials? One thing, as I said, not assumptions. Any trials? Uh, yeah. One one of the things that you I know. said when we started, we are governed by our, our biosafety regulations. We cannot take anything outside. We cannot even eat in the field. We destroy everything. The long-term goal of the project is to complete development and make drought-tolerant and insect-protected varieties available, royalty-free, to smallholder farmers through local seed companies. Pending research results and regulatory approvals, we hope farmers in the Wema countries will have access to drought, tolerant and insect protected maize varieties by the later part of the decade. We are going to allocate uh, groups on harvesting, I mean on the recording of the data. Some, is, some, some data is qualitative, in which case we will give those much more experienced people. And some of it is quantitative, in which case we'll allocate teams of uh, people who have done this work before and they have, been, they have the experience. And what trial are we harvesting? It is a transgenic trial, isn't it? And the transgenic trials are governed by the conditions that we are given by the national regulatory body, which is KNBA. And uh, what did they tell us? Yeah. So the most important thing, I think, is the data that we take. And the data that we take must be correct. We have collected the data as we, as we continued. We planted, we counted the number of plants, we scorned the leaf damage. We, I think today we have, we have already probably, have we taken the plant stand? Not yet. Yes, we have yes. taken the plant stand. Yes. And then we, when we harvest, we are going to count the number of years and all that. But I think for most of you, when you go in there, it is to harvest. When you get there, I think you get the specific interactions from Mulenga, Yamai, Regina, 
as to exactly what, what we are going to, to do. But listen. This way, please. Let me... Songa Pandel. At harvest, there are plant damage parameters that are collected. These are leaf damage scores, number of exit holes, and cumulative stem tunneling. The scores are done on a scale of 1 to 9, where 1 means clean and no damage, therefore resistant, while a score of 9 means highly damaged, therefore plants are susceptible. Number of exit holes points to where adult stem borers emerge from the stem of the plant. A higher number of exit holes proves that a higher number of stem borers survived, indicating that the plant is susceptible. So this plant we have to we have to, to assess we have to assess the number of larvae or insects that were able to burrow into the stock and feed on the stock all the way to the the cumulative stem tunneling is the damage caused by the stem borer during feeding along the stem. A higher tunneling is an indicator of susceptibility of the plant. Other parameters collected at harvest include grain yield. Bt plants showed low leaf damage scores, less number of exit holes and less cumulative stem tunneling. The Bt plants tend to have a 40% higher yield compared to non-Bt equivalents and commercial checks. We are in the process of developing a variety with us, a combination of the two traits. And we have applied to the National Biosafety Authority for, to give, we have applied for them to allow us to carry out the uh, stack tests in Kiboko and, uh, and uh, Kitani. To our partners, um, we cherish so much the collaborations that we, we, we do together. And uh, we want, first of all, to thank you for coming in to help, help us achieve some of our mandates, which we have, without uh, their support, we will not be able to achieve. We also want to encourage our other stakeholders, whether the farmers, to uptake the technologies that are being developed because our core business is to develop technologies for them. And all that we do is to ensure that the technologies that we have developed are useful to them and improve their productivity, their production, and their livelihoods. 